Are we live? Um, I see a live thingy blinking. Okay. So. Well, it says that we're live, my man. So uh, I'm going to go to my page. Everybody okay. share this. Before we do anything, we need to share this uh, far and wide. I'm going to share this to my personal page. Good morning. And anybody who's <laughs> watching this is going to find it. Hey, hey, hey. Stop that. Me? Are you talking uh, to me? Uh, oh. Except the dogs are getting frisky. While I'm, well, as we go live, they get frisky. <laughs> yeah, well, Sam, we're like, hey, he's in the dog room. So, uh, where are you at right now? You're in the dog room. Why are you in the dog room? Because uh, that's where the best signal is. Of course. <laughs> Dogs got to check their, uh, right. their, their mail, their email. Now my screen is frozen here. Okay, there we go. So, because, uh, you know, I set up some Nest cameras, so I chose the best place for that i guess it's 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 a good thing the best um reception is in the dog room oh yeah so you can watch them but you like those nest mm-hmm. cameras i love them man yeah i love them you know yeah. um, i could it notifies me and i mean it's no it's you can you can get an extra um app or you know you can pay extra for to record okay. um, activities but i don't think i need it for the dog room because it notifies me, and it can show you about ten hours of um, past videos of what's what happened. But I guess to have more of that, then you'll have to pay more. But I guess that's to me. I think that is useful if you have an outdoor one, you know, or or if you're uh, security, you know, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. or if you have employees, you need to kind of check back in on them right. or something like that. You know, that's right. another, mm-hmm. um, yeah. I think that's what it'd be useful for, but I, I guess 10 hours is enough for just watching dogs or just monitoring dogs, you know? Yeah, yeah. You'll know if something's that you need to check on in, uh, it, it happened during that day, right? Right, right. Send this to dogs. Chat and everybody, uh, share this. And um, here we go, man. I'm going to post this up to dogs chatting. It's a, one of our, uh, one of my favorite uh, industry pages. And uh, today I am joined, uh, Bow Wow Bill, another live session here, uh, joined by one of my favorite people on the face of the planet. Uh, this is Sam Tabar. And, uh, Hi, everybody. Get, why don't you give a brief introduction, tell everybody who you are and, and where, where you are located in the world. Uh, so Bill said, I'm Sam Tabar. I'm here in Austin, Texas. Um, I own Canine Behavior Solutions. Um, I've been training dogs uh, since twenty late twenty eleven, so that makes it um, six years of um, training full time. So I'm a newish trainer, so I've got a lot to learn. And six, um, six years, you know, and you're still still consider yourself new at six years. That's good. Oh, definitely, definitely. Why? You know, why is that? You know, it's. Uh, um, it's 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 just. Yeah, I will. Okay, so my first two years, my first three years, actually, I thought I knew everything. And then I joined IACP, which is the International Association of Canine Professionals, which Bill and I are members of. And it just opened doors for me, you know, for um, workshops, uh, trainers to shadow, um, trainers to hang out and talk to, and even Facebook groups to, um, you know, just to exchange um, wisdom with other trainers. And then that's when I realized that I knew nothing. <laughs> so, um, so I think to me, it's, it's, it's great, uh, to be a member of such an organization and it's great to, uh, continue your education. So at least, uh, cause you owe it to your clients and to the dogs, um, to have everything in your arsenal to be able to help them because, um, first they paid you to help them and, um, you know, and, um, it's just, I think it's it's just a sign of respect to your clients that um, as someone in as someone who calls themselves a professional to to be at least in the know of of um, of various tools, methods, methodologies, and techniques to help their dog out, um, however way you can. So why why did you become a dog trainer in 2011? What was your motivation? Um, I saw I worked animal control. Um, and oh, really? I saw, yes, yes, I did. I worked animal control and I saw a lot of, um, dogs that were, um, nece- uh, unnecessarily put down 
right. or we you know we issued citations to dog owners for for behaviors and um we got a lot of calls for aggressive dogs which you know dogs are under socialized or they haven't gone out they haven't seen beyond what they're what they see inside their fence and so they're just you know they're just freaked out and so they get labeled aggressive get taken to the pound um get put down and so to me it was just um people needed education you know in order to keep their dogs with them or to keep um uh, to keep their dogs safe to keep them safe and to keep everybody happy including the community that they live in well and it, i mean i think that you probably got fed up right is that you just saw this the same thing over and over and over again and um is that the case? And you were like, look, uh, I see I see a need here. I oh, see yeah. a void that I'm willing to step up and fill. Is that what happened? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You you know, I there there was a there was an empty space that needed to be filled. And so that's when I stepped in and um wanted to help the owners instead of you know, instead of uh punishing them for it, um giving them citations for their right. dogs constantly loose or their dogs acting aggressive, being a nuisance. You know, then giving them solutions rather than um, punishing them for um, what their dogs are doing. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm full. As you know, I'm I'm not a big fan of government or any of that. I, I love to uh, have, have solutions. Um, what their dogs are doing. Shoot, oh, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Okay, you must have it <laughs> open somewhere. The the live, but um, I'm not a big fan of that. I'm not a big fan of coming down on people. You know, right. I'm a big fan of of helping not just that person, but that dog as well and, and helping the people understand why it's important for this dog, the end, that, that, that end of the relationship to be a fulfilling one as well and how that will benefit both sides. And, um, and, and, and I tell people I'm kind of an advocate for this animal and um, what this animal is doing a lot of times is, is a result is just a symptom of the overall mm-hmm. Uh, it's a larger and, issue, right? A larger yeah. issue, right? And so, um, my goal is whenever working with the clients is to not just not just strike at the leaves of a problem, but get to the root, get to the real issues that are going to affect change, and uh, change the quality of life for for both of them, the dog and and the client, for the better. Um, and that's that's what we're here for because we are professionals, and right. people are putting money on the line, and sometimes they're putting a lot of money on the line. Um, they, they have expectations and, um, and every, every dog is different. Every person's different. I say this over and over, every environment's different. And so we're, those are always changing and, and you need an eclectic knowledge base. You need to have a, a pretty big tool chest to go to. Um, and that's why, uh, I continue my, my education. I go to many different teachers, um, and and I I you know we run into each other there at the IACP conference right. and um, you know it's it's really cool because as dog trainers it's good to have a, a conference it's good to have a camaraderie with a network of people that get it mm-hmm. and exactly. uh, you know that's why I I mean it's just and and not only that but share your pain. I mean, we're in this because we love dogs. I mean, I, I am, and I don't want to see them. I had a very similar situation with me where I uh, was, I, I got in trouble as a youth quite a bit. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> yeah, and I had some uh, community service. I had some community service, that, and I love dogs. I've always loved dogs. You know, I've always right. had an attraction to work with them, and uh and I, I had an opportunity to choose my com- community service at the local Humane Society, the Idaho Humane Society outside of Boise, Idaho. And I thought it was rad, dude. I was going to go walk dogs for my community service, right? No. Uh, it, 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 I mean, and, and spray out their kennels and stuff like that. But uh, but what I didn't realize, man, is that I ended up cleaning up the vet's office one day and I went mm-hmm. out. And uh, it was a day that they did euthanasias and they, the dumpsters were full, full of dogs. And oh, wow. I mean, it broke my heart. And that's my driving force of what I do every single day, helping dogs and, um, is seeing that and knowing that there's something broken here in this system that we just mm-hmm. throw these wonderful beings away in the dumpster. 
And I remember that feeling that I had when I was when I stumbled upon that, and, and it was a harsh wake up call to the reality of the situation that we face in this world. Um, and and the, the unfortunate thing is, is that our furry friends are the ones that suffer the most because of it. Exactly, exactly. And to change people's um, notion of, oh yeah, we can just exchange this for a different dog. You know, that, that mentality of um, it's like exchanging a, a shirt that's too small and bringing it to a store and exchanging it for a larger shirt. You know, I mean, there is a solution, but, you know, you, you, you have to be committed to it. You, you have to be. I mean, this is a being that's that lives 10, 15, 18 years of their lives, you know, so um, you've got to respect that, too. Yeah. And they're a feeling they're living, feeling, breathing being and just like nelson said i had nelson on uh, a few uh, episodes ago with jason cohen and he says that you know the what motivates this dog is just as important to this animal as as your life and what motivates right. you and and we can't discount that and and i'm i'm of the belief that because we are human beings and because we have more capabilities with our thought process and because we bring this animal into our world that it is our moral obligation to be stewards of these animals yes and exactly. to make sure you know they're fulfilled and they they and, and um so that's that's that man i mean and, and then you have you know so many different breeds and and uh um you know i think that a lot of times people do uh with these dogs they they kind of get in over their head they don't do their homework when they adopt a dog or they don't uh, realize a particular breed is uh, might not be the best for their situation um, or their lifestyle or their lifestyle. I mean, they're, yeah. they're working all the time. They got a bunch of kids that are busy. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so, I mean, you own, what, what kind of dogs do you have? I have three pitties and I have a little 10 pound terrier mix. I like to wear a shirt that's too small. Here, let's put this on the screen for all of the- quicker. <laughs> 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 of course you do, Todd. Of course you do. And we love that you love love uh, your, uh, your <laughs> tiny shirts. <laughs> Sorry, I, got, I had to put that up there. Hey, so someone has to wear those shirts. You yeah, know, you can't yeah. just keep returning the shirt. So, you know, at least you're at least. Um, you know, Todd is filling a, a, a void that <laughs> stores are um, are finding that yeah. their small well, it's, shirts it's, uh, aren't selling as much. It, I mean, and that's the thing is that um, that's what's good about having this network is that we can get together and kind of, you know, laugh about things that uh, yes. we get and, and uh, bring humor to the situation that uh sometimes is is very heartbreaking and uh i'm very thankful for todd man and i told todd that i i met todd at an iacp conference in i think 2010 uh-huh Where in was austin. This? austin austin oh, Texas. oh really huh. yeah triple crown it was before triple crown got bought out by um starmark starmark yep yeah, yeah. And that's where, where are you at? You're in Austin, aren't you? Yes, I'm in Austin. Um, I was already in Austin um, back then, but I, 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 you know, I wasn't really into dog. Well, I was just starting into dog training and I haven't heard of ICP just yet. Yeah, I mean, and um, Austin's a pretty cool place. I mean, it's, uh, is that where you were an animal control officer at too or no? Um, it was in a suburb of Austin, but uh, I mean, yeah, Austin is a great place. You know, people love their dogs. There's a lot of places that you take your dogs hiking. There's a lot of dog parks in here, you know, although I'm not a big fan of them. Um, but, you know, uh, it's it's such a dog-friendly place that uh, it's it's a great place to, you know, to run a dog training business, to educate people and uh, to help them with their, their dog issues. So I hear that you, you just mentioned that you're not a fan of dog parks. Yes, I'm not. Um, Why aren't because... You? Well, you know, it's there. It, it's like a free for all. Um, untrained dogs go in; they just play on their, uh, you know, they run and play on their own. And um, owners check out. Um, what I mean by checking out is, you know, they get on their phone and 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 yep. browse the internet, um, or, or bring a book, bring their laptops. Uh, sometimes some people bring food and or or, or 
or beverages and drink with their friends. They act like it's a picnic, you know, and they let their dogs um, just play on their own. And then something happens. Next thing you know, you've got a fight going on. You got dogs hurt and all that. So no one advocates for the dog. So, so it's like fight club. I think um, someone said something. Um, one Chad of my colleagues Mackin. said, yeah, Chad Mackin said it's like fight club. You know, or so. a yeah, diseased fight club, a diseased fight club. Yeah. That's, that's what he calls dog parks. Yeah. So, you know, no one advocates for dogs. So, you know, so it just, it's just a big free for all. Yeah. Well, and I think that it's something that is human, you know, conceptualized, but it doesn't really work in the dog world because uh, people do check out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, we got to realize that dogs are pack animals. They, they develop a camaraderie, a, a rapport with their with their pack that they see on a regular basis. And right. they form a relationship. And they don't look at other dogs as friends right away. They look at them as intruders and they want to know what they're up to. Right. And, and so if we have dogs that are coming over and over to this particular area and they start building a rapport then if you come into a dog park and I've seen it with my own two eyes and you are, it's like your first time there, you might see that your dog gets ganged up on right away. Mm -hmm. At the yeah. gate. It gets ganged up on at the gate. Yeah. At the gate. So. Very loud in there. And, and, and not only that, but it's also, um, you know, like you said, people check out and they don't, mm -hmm. people don't recognize the sign of posturing. They don't recognize no. when a dog is being a, a butthead and, uh, and they'll, they'll make uh, labels for it. They anthropomorphize it. And they're like, oh, my dog's being cute. Or I've heard this one. My dog's gay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> he, he, loves, he loves male dogs. So, yeah. Yeah, he He's only gay. mounts other male dogs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, they, um, they either they see the signs, but they, by, uh, but they attribute uh, different kinds of human emotions that are there. You're just trying to play or, you know, he's just being loud, you know, so they, they're not reading their dogs properly. They're not reading other dogs properly. So, and that's, that's what leads to trouble. Yep. Well, and not dogs, dogs leave the dog park with a bitter taste in their mouth. And so the next time they go in there, they get overly defensive or overly protective of something, you know, well, not only do they live with a, a bitter taste in the mouth about that area, but now their handler did not protect them or did mm -hmm. not provide yeah. a safe environment for them. So now that relationship is jeopardized as well. It builds that, um, you know, that, I mean, and, and they're more, and that, that leads into that being more, more cautious right. at each time. They, they lose trust in their owners. So, yeah. Why is it important for a dog to have trust with their owner or their handler? Well, it's just um, it's just part of a good relationship, you know. Um, if you advocate for your dog, then you've got a less reactive dog. You've got a less nervous, less anxious dog because then the dog knows that that you've got their back. Right. You know that, you, that um, they don't need to be overly um, that they. It's not just them versus the world, but you know, but. If if he focuses on you, if if um, if he can trust you in, in in certain situations that the dog is not confident about, then then he doesn't have to worry about anything. Yep. You know because his owner is right there. Well, and his owner's got it without a doubt, yeah, exactly. and it brings yeah. confidence, and it brings uh, mm -hmm. um, you know the the gratitude of that relationship too. Right. And, um, and then also we can see our dog too, and we can reflect back and look at, at, at when that dog is is getting overwhelmed, and mm -hmm. uh, and we could take note of that as well, and, and maybe uh, help uh, them through it. What's that? Help help them through it. Help them through it. That's right. Yeah. And increase it or, or work it as a training moment, as a as mm -hmm. a learning moment, yeah. and and highlight that. But if you're checked out. It, it, it's not gonna it's not gonna work that way because you kind of need to be there constantly with that dog and right. some of these dogs some of these dogs are a lot more higher maintenance than other dogs yes some of them are powerful breeds yeah um, yeah um you know pe people like to say well they're just the same as other dogs but um i you know i don't think they are you know, of course, yes, they are dogs, but they have 
some powerful breeds have a high propensity of prey drive, you know, or or they're quick to um, to 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 channel into their prey drive, and I think it's again it's our duty to. I mean, I have three pities, and everybody says, "Oh man, you have such great dogs. Um, they're so um, they're so good," but they don't see the work that have been put into those dogs um, right. to get them to that point where I could control them off leash, I could call them off prey. Um, or you know they can walk nicely with me and go to me, go with me somewhere else and, and and be around other dogs without them causing trouble or be a nuisance to um, to society. Yeah, well, and that's what people um you know they think that uh, you know when they watch, I tell my clients I should say when they watch NFL, I tell them, do you think that 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 team just got together that day and boom, they performed like that amazingly. You don't see all the hours and hours and hours of sacrifice and dedication that happens behind the scene and discipline and patience. And, and, and that's it is that, um, is that this is a relationship, a team that you're building and that team, it, it, it has trust elements. It has, um, you know, tests that are, they're going to test boundaries. They're going to test that you know what you're doing or, or um, that you are for real and that you're going to stick with the schedule. Um, and, and they're going to test if you're a sucker or not, if you're going to give them some of that delicious food or, or what I call dog money. Um, you know, there's so many different ways that these dogs are going to um, map who we are. And uh, it's just right. fair that we know who they are as well. And if you don't perform well in a team, you get benched. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So. Yeah. Well, but we also belong to, you know, this day and age where everybody gets a trophy, dude. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I think we <laughs> see that. What do you, what do you think about that? Um, I didn't grow up in that age, you know, um, I grew up in a in the age where you know if you get a ninety four, it's like where's the other six, <laughs> you know. So um, I think it's uh, it breeds. Um, I mean, I say it breeds, but uh, what's uh, for for lack of a better term? But I think um, uh, it creates a very low expectation, you know that that if you just participate, then then that's it. You know, you I guess. Nowadays, no one wants to strive for excellence, or or, or or if you just get a participation trophy, then you don't um, you grow up not trying to be the best that you can be in in whatever it is that you do. Right. Well, and you don't hold yourself to um, the standards. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Standards are very important, and I think um, and I've reached out to Tony Anchetta. And a couple other, I've talked to Mary Mathery, too, who uh, are some luminaries in the dog industry that are old school. And yeah. they'll adhere to these standards. And I think that it's very important to see what happened. What happened through uh, the evolution of dog training to these standards? Because I, I go and I talk to um, other dog trainers and I ask them about the standards that they adhere to. And it's not, it's not the same. You know, it's not the same. It's not the same expectation. It's not the same. um, um, It's not the same targets. I'm reading Todd's comments. And uh, just so you know, he he loves your earrings. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I I forgot what they're called. uh, It's the new earphones for the iPhone. I can't. I can't. Um, well, I could, but they don't. They don't have the jacks anymore. So, but yeah, I mean, um, it looks good. <laughs> Thanks, Todd. <laughs> Todd, you're on my radar too. I want Todd on one of these live. If anybody has any questions for Sam or I, feel free to type them in the comments below uh, on the original uh, broadcast here, and uh, we'll we'll uh, answer those on the live stream. And if any trainers, if Todd, if you want to come on board or if you want to come on live, Todd, let me know and I'll send you a link. I'm actually just going to send them a link. To speaking, it. speaking of standards, um, I think that's why we're seeing a lot of these issues with dogs and their owners. A lot of 
um, dogs um, attacking, you know, people or, or mauling kids and all that because our standards for training has really gone down. Yeah, and that's, I mean, and look at the results of that. And that's mm-hmm. one of the things that I, as a professional, I was I was reading and, and getting these uh, – uh, and a lot of them, it was like clicker training. And, and why why isn't this clicker working out here? Like it works perfectly in the house. It works everywhere else. And But it, but right. as soon as we bring in an element of, uh, you know, uh, that, that uh, touches on that instinct of that animal, uh, a lot of this training goes out the window. And then you realize that, um, that if – a lot of these, a lot of the training that is derived from modern day um, philosophies was was brought about in an acoustic chamber called the science lab, without consideration that these animals come out into the real world with us. They're not a pigeon. This isn't a rat. This is a, a dog that 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 we take into the world and um, and experiences this world with us. That's that's right. rich with external stimuli, almost infinite. And, and not only that, but there's chaos inevitable at any minute in this world. And uh, we have to be ready for that. And so um, that's what, that's what got me to, you know, kind of look deeper into this training uh, philosophy that I was adhering to and looking at the teachers that I was learning from Um yeah, I think that absolutely the standards that have gone out the window have something to do with this. Correct. Exactly. And you talking about just using, you know, well, you use clickers as an example, but yeah, I yeah. think it's a bit silly if you just limit yourself to that one tool or one philosophy, um, you know, in training, because um as a professional or as someone who calls himself a professional, then it implies that um, um, we don't need to continue or to explore other methods or options as, as trainers. And I think, again, it's a disrespect to our clients um, because um, it's our duty to be able to do right with with um, with these dogs that we're helping. Yeah. I mean, and they're paying for it. They have their money uh-huh. on the line. Yeah, exactly. And so I don't know if you can see the pictures that I'm posting up on. Uh, I do. And so this was a, a class here. It looks like uh, when you're continuing education sessions, what, what class is this that we're looking uh, at? That's um, Advanced E-Caller um, Workshop with Robin McFarlane. Oh, there's of out of um, Robin McFarlane is a trainer out of Dubuque, Iowa. I think she owns That's My Dog. She's one of the top e-collar trainers in the country. So I've been wanting to attend her workshops, and um, I was pretty um, blessed to that she was coming to Dallas. And so I went there for a two-day workshop. So let's talk about e-collars. Sure. So, I mean, why, what, what got you into e-collars? What made you start training with e-collars? Um, and, and what are e-collars for, for the listeners who might not know? Um, e-collar is just one of the tools that we use to, um, to make communication clear with our dogs, um, to create off-leash obedience. Um, is it necessary? Maybe not really, but, um, but, because you know, again, we are um, we are in the day and age of advancing training, learning new tools, learning new um, methods. Um, why not, right? I mean, if we can create uh, a much more reliable recall, a much quicker recall with our dog with an e-collar, or creating a much more clear communication with our dog, why not, right? So. Um, um, I started e-collar because I was pretty anti e-collar because I did not understand it. And I right. think that's what, that's what most people are with, um, who are opposed to e-collars. They don't understand the tool. All they think is e-collar and electricity. Wow. So it yeah. equals shocking the dog. Um, wow. I got into it because a client gave me one. She said, 
my previous trainer um, gave um, used this on the dogs, but I didn't like it, and I didn't I didn't want to throw it away, so I'm gonna give it to you. <laughs> so she gave it to me, and I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't want to throw it away because it seemed expensive. Um, it was a dog tri IQ, okay. um, um, so uh, I was like, well, let's research how to use it. So I went to YouTube. Um, I think um, I don't know who I saw, who it was that I saw use the e-collar, but I think it's either a Pat Nolan video or maybe it was a Robin McFarland video. But you know, um, I saw how they how they used it, and then I practiced with my dogs. Now that I think it took me a year or two to until I was confident enough that um, I could offer it to clients and um, and their dogs. Yeah. And, and so what was your first, I mean, what was your first kind of aha moment with these colors? Um, this is, this is not something that is meant to hurt. This is something because, and I tell people, you know what, I could have a flip phone, but I love my iPhone. Right. You know, just something that, that is available to us. Um, it's a technology that, that enables that learning um, uh, environment to be accepted much more effectively and efficiently um and so what what clicked for you um the aha moment was when i tried it on myself and you know i started at lower levels and i was like that's not bad you know of course when i got to the higher levels it was more of a more of a surprise rather than oh man that hurts you know right. it's not like sticking a fork into um an electric socket where you know it probably shoots you you know halfway across the room and so I was like, huh, this is not so bad. And so put it on the dog and in fo following the instructions uh, from the video that I watched, I, I, I'm sorry, I can't remember what it was, but you know, but the dog had, them. what's that? Yeah, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them, but a lot of you know, really but, good knowledge. Right. And so, you know, and just, just seeing that the dog getting it quickly, you know, with, you know, with, with proper body language, um, maybe using a treat or two um, with clear guidance and the dog's getting it quickly and not really getting hurt with it. You know, it's, I mean, I could see that you could use it as a punishment tool, yeah. but you can also, I mean, just like a knife, you know, you can use a knife to stab someone, kill someone, but at the hands of a chef, a knife can create beautiful food, um, beautiful slices of meat and, and what have you. Yep. It's not, it's not, not how it's, or it's a tool. It's not how it's, or excuse me, it's, it's how it's used. It's just a tool, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it, I think it's, um, it's either George Cockrell that says it, it's the tool, not the fool. Right. So. Right. And that's, that's absolutely it. And that's, you know, and, and um, I've seen some wonderful, wonderful, uh, uh, I've seen this dog, I've seen this tool save dogs' lives. Yes. Like I have seen it save dogs and I'm an advocate for them. Um, I definitely, uh, I want my dogs to a level where they do not need anything, any tools, any, any leashes, any collars or anything on them. And they're still uh, obedient uh, perfectly as if they had it on there. Uh, but it, it, that doesn't happen overnight. And no, these, it doesn't, you know, they're, they apply are there, great ways to apply layers to the learning mm -hmm. to help help to right. really for that right. dog to get it. Right. Nowadays I can have my dogs off leash without the e-collars, but if we are in a new place, um, like if I come up to Dallas and um, one of the trainers there goes and hikes um, on a five mile hike. And of course they're not, they're not familiar with that environment. And there's a lot of dogs involved. Uh, the last time I was there, there was about 20, 21 dogs. Um, that was on an off-leash hike. And so I put their e-collars on just, you know, if I need it. It's kind of like a seat belt um, you ha uh, or insurance, you know. You have it uh, just in case you need it uh, rather than um, needing it and not having it. Yep. Well, see these knuckleheads that I just put up? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, is this your crew uh, or is this? Uh... Uh, half of those is my crew. Um, let's see. The bottom two on the floor. That's part of my crew. The one on top in the middle, the white one with the tongue out, is part of my crew. And the scraggly one on the far right um, is part of my crew. 
Very good. Uh, every everybody else are fosters, uh, boarders, and trainees. You know what? I've heard people whenever I post up a picture like this of of the of people that will comment and say, "Oh, they're all sad." <laughs> Well, because they've never seen um, a dog that's calm before. You know, yeah. all they see. Uh, well, their idea of a happy dog is a dog that's bouncing off the walls. You know, that's happy to them, and I think um, that's that's that's. I think that's the opposite. You know, um, dogs have not. These dogs have not been taught how to access um, a calmer state of mind or to prioritize a calmer state of mind. And so they're always um, on a go, 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 go basis uh, or in a a go, go, go state of mind, you know? So, and a lot of dog owners think that, you know, that is, that is normal. Right. You know, so. But that's not, that's manic and that's crazy. And that's a bouncy ball. I mean, that's not open. That's not receptive. Imagine if you were on all the time in the limelight all the time, and we see this happen to celebrities. They they have a mental breakdown. They they get uh-huh. exhausted. Yeah. They need, and uh, and they just snap sometimes. Right. And, um, Actually, that white dog I have um, up on the photo right now. Uh, that's June, and she I call her my crazy one, but she has an off switch. You know, I can have her go crazy, and she can go on for hours and hours. Um, you know, getting a ball or just running around and being an idiot but you know if i tell her you know just lay down and yeah uh, it's time to calm down then she'll calm down and lay down and chew a chew an antler right now that's what she's doing is chewing an antler so well and that's what it. you know the duration work can be used both ways either we can turn it on or we need you to focus on turning it off yes yeah and that's, that's yeah. actual focus and and um, a lot of people really need to realize that when a dog is always on and crazy that's a lot of stress Mm-hmm. Uh, it is stressful because then, you know, uh, they only know one speed. That's so, right. Crazy so, speed. So uh, part of being balanced is also knowing when to relax and when to access that energy, energetic uh, uh, or that energy, you know, to to go run around and be um, be crazy, be playful. Yeah, and and to and the other side is to just be, right? Just be, be crazy, just, or to just be, and to just, just be, be and coexist. And and I think that's part of the reason of why some dogs have issues being around other dogs is they don't know how to relax, and so this other dog is like, I don't want to be around you. You're nuts. Well, yeah, just imagine if we brought somebody <laughs> in that was just you know all over you, and right. I mean, and being very inappropriate. Yeah, right. and in their space, and and they're staring, and they're touching, and right. what they're saying, and and it's going to cause a conflict. It's just a matter of time, um, and and we we don't expect any different, for, or I don't expect any different of these animals, right. and um, you know, and that's what a lot of these dogs that that are a working breed or a powerful breed, what we call a powerful breed, which are game breeds. I mean, these dogs right. uh, were, a lot of them were bred to fight. And um, if we come at them um, with too much, um, too much gusto, they might think that we're, we're in a fight with them too. If we don't, if we, we're not taking the right approach here with the right dog, uh, we might be exacerbating the problem. They're mm. kind of pouring gasoline yeah. on the fire. Exactly. Exactly. You know, what's I don't mean. Or, um, uh, I had a client recently that, you know, he wanted to be the alpha with his dog, and he learned that you know you had to roll the dog and you know be on top of him and all that. And well, granted, he had a soft German Shepherd, but still, soft dogs can still fight back when they think that you know they are being overly manhandled. And I don't think that's a proper way of training a dog, you know, right. I mean, although some trainers will swear by it, but I think in, you know, it, with, with my, with how I've learned dog training, I think there are better ways than to do that. So I showed him a better way and he was, um, I, th- I think he was grateful to that. I showed him that, you know, he doesn't have to be, um, 
manhandling his dog in order to to show the dog who is alpha or who is the leader you know it's it can we we can show leadership and and have the dog be cooperative with us rather than showing him um you know rather, rather than intimidating the dog yeah i mean it's a give and take and we're open up lines of communication and it's yeah. it's a it's a two way you know uh uh parallel communication here right. where we're um and a lot of times with my uh, male clients i'm telling them to ease up mm-hmm. and to be like, yeah. hey, look, hey look the dog gets it dude the dog got <laughs> it. you know don't you don't need to worry about continuing this the dog got right. it okay. right and now the dog is doing what we what we need and then the same thing with the with a lot of my female clients i'm telling them hey you need to get on that dog right then mm-hmm. yeah. and you bring it you need to bring a lot more and uh uh, a lot more assertive energy and really, really right. let the dog that this let this dog know that that is not unacceptable. Right. Um, right. Yeah, and with, yeah. With, with male clients, they get too assertive, so they got to dial it down. And then the female, female, some female clients, we got to dial it up the assertiveness. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, man. And then so you know, and you are also one of the guys that, uh, as dog trainers, we we go to. For a number of different technical answers, or <laughs> just, just uh, I mean, just different information. And I want to, I want you to, uh, I want to know your opinion on the information age and how it's going to affect uh, not only the industry but our relationship with our dogs. Um, I think it's great. So at least dog owners know it's out there. Um, I mean, lots of dog. I think it's it has helped dog training. You know, lots of dog owners see that, you know, there's dog training available, dog trainers available all over the world. But I think um, it's um, it's caveat emptor, you know, buyer beware, because there's a lot of um, uh, people out there that are just great with, you know, great with marketing or they have the budget to, to put out all the marketing materials and all that. But um, maybe they're not the best people to train um, your dogs with. But, you know, I, I, and I don't think, I think the, the advent of the internet and YouTube and, and having smartphones in our hands has just um, increased um, that um, visibility. But um, back in the day, we've had, um, you know, snake oil charmers, snake oil sellers. So they, they gather people around and they sell snake oil. You know, so if you if you get sold to it, then you know you've got yourself some useless snake oil that you what think will cure you. you. And what's um, the best way to deter from that? What 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 is the best way to vet a trainer to know that they are the real deal? That they're not they're not just trying to sell you some marketing plan or, or snake oil. Um, oh, I would say, I would say talk to, talk to, I hear um, I hear an echo. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. Um, but yeah, I think, um, you know, talk to, other, no, talk to their clients, um, look at their, look at their affiliation, um, maybe ask around, you know, I mean, that's, that's what I do, um, when I'm looking for other professionals in, um, in my, in my city, you know, for, you know, not, not, not just dog training, but, um, to fix appliances or, you know, to okay. fix up the house or whatnot, you know. So I ask around and, and get a good um, recommendation from someone. Okay. I think well, I just, saw this, I just saw this comment here from Justin. He says, still remember the first time I felt the stem from an e collar Sam really opened my eyes to a whole new level of training in that moment. Hey, and, Justin. Uh, yeah, love you, Justin. Yeah, he's a good dude. So, yeah. and then so, let me see here. There we go. He's out hunting. He's out hunting. Yeah, hunting. <laughs> cool. Well, let me see what else we got here with your photos that I brought up. So we got uh, dogs in the down stay here. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh, what a beautiful picture. Dog, flower dogs. <laughs> blue bonnets. Uh, uh, those are traditional blue bonnet Texas pictures. 
There you go. So you walk in, you, you do pack walks or you do walk dogs at all, or is this just a photo? Um, or I used to do pack walks when I had a ton of dogs. Um, not so much now. Uh, well, I still do, but not not that not that many. Yeah, and everybody look at those dogs, nice and relaxed, calm. Except for this little guy. He's like, what the heck? <laughs> Who is that over there? <laughs> Which one is it? Uh, uh, I think it was Dave. Yeah, I'm just playing. That's just something. The more dogs with the blue bonnet. We have, um, what do we have up here? Mm, I can't remember the name of them right now. So. And there we are back at the beginning. At the, yeah. This is actually yeah. taken at an ICP conference uh, dinner that, that we were at. Uh, that in, was the uh, ICP in California. California, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, LA there. So, yeah, well, and that's what I, I definitely recommend people checking out the International Association of Canine Professionals. A lot of great people there. And uh, let me see if we have any questions on our comment section here. And if not, then. You know, it's a uh, New Year's Eve, and I thank you so much for taking time out and joining me today, Sam, and chatting with me. And, uh, you know, I appreciate you and what you do for not just the dogs that you work with, but also the other uh, colleagues like myself uh, who, who are in the industry as well. And, um, yeah, I, I appreciate you, appreciate your time. doesn't look like we have any more questions. So uh, how do people get a hold of you if they would like to uh, – find you in the Austin area to, to help you with their or help have you help them with their dog well they can visit my well, website it's caninebehaviorsolutions.com canine is spelled out c-a-n-i-n-e behaviorsolutions.com I'll put that up on the screen here really quick and then you're in Austin and, and what do you offer for um well, we, we we offer in home services and board and train services um, in the Austin and surrounding areas, and we do um, all kinds of behavior: aggressive dogs, um, dogs with separation anxiety, people with issues walking their dogs, or just people wanting to have a generally great relationship with their dogs. Awesome! I'm going to put a, a link right here in the comment section to your Facebook page. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Bill, and thank you for all that's watching on uh, New Year's Eve. Hope you all have a great New Year, and uh, and hope everybody will have a great 2018. 2018 is going to be awesome, man. So it's we'll going to be you. awesome. We'll see you bigger. in Florida, I think, is going to be the yeah. IACP conference this yep, year. Definitely. If you're interested, check out canineprofessionals.com, and also check out Canine Behavior Solutions. Uh, Spelled out, canine behavior. Let me see if I can spell solutions. <laughs> solutions like, with an S. There you go. Solutions, plural. Yes, sir. Canine behavior solutions. Right there. Check them out online.com. Dan, happy new year, brother. You too, Bill. Happy new year. Thanks for having me. Bye, everybody. Bye.